afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Wednesday, June 15th, 2022, a little after 3 p.m. Eastern. We have a time for change call tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. Use everything to find God. If you can't see God in all, you can't see God at all. Unknown. We are all so deeply consumed by the world every day, the moment we open our eyes in the morning, the mind kicks in, and we are flooded with all sorts of beliefs, emotions, and desires. It can become very easy in this day and age to feel overwhelmed, lost, or confused. We are constantly dealing with a massive amount of information and social pressure every day. Pressure with finances, relationships, love life, family, work, health problems are all at the foundation. And then there's our newly found technological relationships with cell phone, internet, texting, We may spend half our day just trying to figure out how to get through it alive. This technological era we are in is so captivating that we can easily miss out on the connection, excuse me, with our amazing spiritual existence. If we were surrounded every day by people whose only interest was in achieving enlightenment, our world would be very, very, very different. Yet, we have chosen a planet where everyone is still deeply asleep to their divine and enlightened nature. In fact, we are all so asleep that we don't even know that we are asleep. We are so asleep that we don't even know we are asleep. Every human being is sleepwalking through this life meaning that we are always plugged into the mind. The veil is so thick and the pattern is so deep that we need to use everything we've got to wake up. This means using everything you can find outside of you and inside of you. Any real ecstasy is a sign you are moving in the right direction. Don't let any prude tell you otherwise, St. Teresa of Avila. So my golden suggestion for everyone this week is this. Use everything around you to find God. Use every conversation as a vehicle to listen to the divine. Use all your senses everywhere you go. Touch, taste, feel, hear, and even breathe in the the smell of the divine. Use every moment of your free time to find deep silence, stillness, and inner peace so you can connect deeper with the divine. Use the media and all that excessive advertising that is constantly dumped on you to find God. When you read something that jumps out at you, try to notice how it's spiritual message just for you. When you feel like you might be making some form of connection to God, breathe that feeling deeply into your body. Stop everything and give this experience all that you've got because it might not last long. Notice how the feeling resonates with what's going on in your life. Find the practical aspects like, how does this simple billboard advertisement give me the deepest guidance I'm needing in my relationships right now? We don't have coincidences. There aren't any. God is already always around all of us. We only have synchronicity in this life. Everything is perfect and divinely aligned. The God source never, ever makes mistakes. When you are 100% devoted to finding total alignment with the divine and everything around you, the magic will its way into you. Discovering one thing about 
spiritual awakening process that is certain. If you want access to the most amazing spiritual experience in this life, it is going to take everything you've got. The enlightened state is definitely not like anything you've experienced before. There are no more problems in your life anymore. There are only deeper and deeper connections with the divine. Enlightenment is not for the half-ass skeptical seeker, the protective pessimist, or the mind addict that is super smart intellectually. It's for the ordinary being who has devoted their entire heart and soul to something beyond this world. It's for that simple soul who wants to create the deepest, healthiest relationship with themselves and the God source. The biggest difference of all, perhaps, is that their connection with God is their highest priority all throughout the day. Their highest priority is their connection with God all throughout the day. True love, my dear, is putting an ironclad grip upon the soft swollen balls of a divine rogue elephant and not having the good fortune to die, happens. So you're open to exploring your connection with the divine this week. Chances are that you're probably wondering what's the right way and how to do it, or are feeling hesitant, reluctant, or thinking that maybe this week is not the right time. There will always be super important things which you need to do. Yet the reality is that your soul has been waiting for real spiritual liberation for lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. You've been preparing for a profound spiritual experience forever. We're all here to let go of everything and find our real connection to the divine again. We've been learning major life lessons after major life lessons, killing the hard, tough inner soil inside us, just so that one day our souls could find some higher enlightened state of being. We were born to find some way home to ourselves, so our minds are always free from all fear, resistance, stagnation, and separation. The enlightened mindset just happens when you return to the pure source of awareness that is behind the mind. When you discover the awareness behind every thought that you're thinking, you come closer to the most sacred intelligence in the universe This is who you truly are. The funny thing is that there is only one tiny thing stopping you from seeing, feeling, and knowing that God is here now. This is your own mind. The mind is so full of personal beliefs and ideas about life that there's not much room for anything else. It is overflowing so much that we have become blind to God. Watch out for the mind. Master your thoughts. It is the only thing stopping you right now is your mind. So I want you to try something this week. The next time you're in front of a mirror, look non, non, non judgmentally into the mirror. Just notice, what do you see? Do you see how amazing, multidimensional, and extremely beautiful you truly are? Or do you see all of your flaws and shortcomings? If the mind is not set aside, we can only see and hear what it thinks is good and bad. The mind can be extremely judgmental, and this is pure entertainment for the ego. We dislike being bored. So we cling to all sorts of opinions about right and wrong. 
as long as we are over identified with and attached to opinions of good bad we cannot spiritually awaken as long as we are over identified with and attached to opinions of good and bad we cannot spiritually awaken just remember that all of this life is a grand play and the nature of the mind is to create contrasts and comparisons the mind doesn't like the gray middle path when the mind is too empty it seeks something juicy to fill it let go of filling up the mind and find the spiritual being that you truly are this is in the silence and stillness within interestingly the heart is not judgmental at all the heart only loves accepts and embraces what is so don't trust the mind trust your heart instead be free of the mind just remain in the heart you will soon in time find the divine and this is a miracle the moment that you realize that there is no way to make a home then this whole existence is home then wherever you are you're at home of course in miracles every day we get lost in a sea of duality expect the pendulum to swing back and forth from being lost to being found again and again our minds are not the only mind out there that are making a living hell or heaven out of each moment everyone is doing this we are all blind to the divine we simply have to learn choose to learn how to release all attachments trust in God and surrender to its totality when we take this risk to dissolve back into the source in each moment we naturally discover how everything around us is helping and guiding us to be free the good news is that we've got a billion or more lifetimes to become enlightened God is never ever going to stop loving the bad news is that if postponed you'll miss out on the 1,000 opportunities heading your way today there's no real end to this journey we don't die when we die we do not die when we die so truly there is nothing to be concerned about when you realize you are an eternal being what's there to be worried or fearful about you're on an infinite journey you are always safe and on the right path you've made it this far and you are still a very conscious and deeply sensitive being this is a very good sign so if you will Fill the place where you're not going to be interrupted. I'm sure that we all are. First thing that we care to do, relax the body that you're in. You're not the body. You're not the character, the personality. You're not your status. You're the God within that body. So we focus on our breath. <coughs> Excuse me. We focus on our breath easy and slowly in through the nose and easy and slowly out through the mouth and this moves us into the mouth because the now is all we have now the ego mind it doesn't want you to be in the now. It never wants you to be in the now because it doesn't exist in the now. This is why the ego mind is constantly poking and prodding and pulling and rushing and hurrying and pressuring you 
to either be into yesterday or tomorrow. Never the now. Works pretty good, too, doesn't it? Most of us aren't in the now. But when you focus on the breath and you move into the now, there's some things that happen. Right? Ego mind's not there. You still it because you're not interacting with it. Subconscious mind's not there. You still it. You're not interacting with it. And all the mind chatter, because we put out over 60,000 thoughts every 24 hours. That's not there either. And the mind programs, billions of them, flying by like clouds in the sky. And about 99.9% of them, is not, they're not yours. They're like, they're just programs. That's not there. We're only in the moment, moment to moment. You, you could not answer anybody that would ask you, what are you doing tomorrow, if you were in the now? You couldn't answer that. Obviously, you can answer it if you're, only, if you're in the past yesterday or tomorrow. You can always answer those questions. Like, where are you going to be five years from now? The most idiotic question I've ever seen asked. When you're in the now, how are you going to project five years from now? How many expectations will you include? How many attachments? Once we go within ourselves and we start the journey within, we move into the now. That's a gateway to the God within the body. And to sit and commune with the God that you are. How long will that take? For any of us. It's up to each one of us to determine that. And is there really a time placed on it? No. Is there a hurry? No. So, in the now, suffering isn't there. In yesterday or tomorrow, suffering is always there. So you say, well, if I'm going to live in yesterday or tomorrow then I'm going to suffer. Expectations and attachments throughout yesterday and tomorrow. Do you believe that anything would be occurring as is occurring now had a lot of us found the God that we are within the body? answer to that emphatically is what? It'd be a whole different place. Staying in the now is another story. Consistently. Most of us, maybe for a few seconds, are in the now. And it is imperative that we are gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves at all times, and that we're in the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude, love, and peace. So when you're in the now, you find yourself wandering off, which we all do, it's real easy. It's I'll focus on my breath and I'll be in the now. Listen to my breath. You can focus on where your heart mind is. Don't drop down too low in the body. But right in right where the sternum is, right there. You can know when you're there. You'll know when you're there. 
And you practice dropping down into the heart mind and feel from the heart mind. Not the head, not the ego mind, but the heart mind. The more you do that, the more you're going to want to do it. And every time you focus on the breath, you're in the now. There's, there's no if, ends, buts about it. So you, you focus, I, I float it off, I focus on my breath, I'm in the now. 3,000% of the time, which is every single time. Now, if you look at the, the paths that we all stand in front of, we have choices, always have choices. And there's three paths. We're, all of us are standing in the center path, which is the now. One on the left is yesterday. One on the right is tomorrow. Now, you can see how the, the trees have formed a golden canopy over each path. Branches and leaves and bark. Shimmering gold. And you see the path itself is a brilliant emerald green flaming grass. There's the grass. You look on the one on the left yesterday, and the thing you notice the most is that it's been used a lot. Same with the, the path on the right tomorrow. It's been used a lot. But we all notice that the path we're standing on in the center the now looks just almost brand new. And we know why, because the ego mind keeps us out of the now. Because it knows it doesn't exist in the now. And a lot of us will reminisce, if not all of us, at one time, shape, form, or another in this life. You know, we reminisce. We, we review things. It's not like we're, we're saying, okay, it's time to review things. We just review and they come in. We've been going back 10, 20, 30, lots of years, or recently. We review them. And we look at them. And some are fun. So they say, oh, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. I wouldn't mind doing that again. And the others are just for guidance. You know, I did this this way. It didn't work. I'm going to try a different way to see if it works. So we kind of use it as a fun time and a reference time. Now, of course, we all have a great hall. All of us do. And great halls, the subconscious mind. Now, the interesting about the subconscious mind is that it records everything, everything. Not one smidgen gets by it. When you enter that baby body, it starts, and it records everything around you, all of your responses, all the people, all the comments, all the, everything. Not just this lifetime, but all lifetimes. And then, and then it plays it back. In that wild, it plays it back. So that's how we get caught in reliving things. Now we'll go. We'll go into our great hall, open the door, turn on the light. Now, see, you know, when you walk into a room, your eyes will immediately splash the walls and the ceilings. Well, when we go into our great hall. There aren't no, there, it's so vast, there's no ceiling or walls that you can see. Now, nonetheless, we'll go to shelves and drawers and we'll get some movies, some pictures, and some books. And we'll go sit in an easy chair, and right in front of you is this like screen floating. And it's like a blank canvas. And we'll watch some of the movies. We'll read some of the books, and we'll look at some of the pictures. And we have fun. And we're reminded. We get a little bit of education from our experiences. But we don't stay there. We'll take everything, put it back in its proper place, turn off the light, shut the door, and move forward in life. And sometime, we'll revisit but some of us, 
we, I said unconsciously, we stay there so long that we end up taking that past, bringing it into a future that doesn't exist, creating that future from that past and reliving that past and that future. That's why a lot of people will say, no matter what we do, we always seem to end up here. Now, we all go into the future, too. Yes, tomorrow, right? Future. Evil mind is sitting there rushing you, hurrying you, pushing you, prodding you, poking you, poking you, poking you. And then, you know, you get frustrated and you get irritated and you get exasperated and, and you get hurried and impatient. And so you got to try to start pushing things. And then, then you go into this future and you're looking for answers. Now, if you can't find the answers with yourself, because most can't because they don't know what to go within, that's where the, all the answers are to their questions. So you seek external authority. And there's a lot of it there. You, you've got card readers. You've got tea leaf readers. You've got palm readers. You've got pendulum readers. You got astrologers, you got psychics, you got clairvoyants. I mean, there's a lot of resources that you can tap into of external authority. And whoever they might you know, sit there and say, well, this is the reading and this is what's going to happen. And your question might be money, right? Um, well being, happiness. And so they tell you that, look, this is, this is what looks to be, that may be happening. It's going to happen for you. you know, you're going to come into a lot of money. It's going to come out of the clear blue. You won't even be expecting it. There's that word expecting. Now, there's two different, roughly, there's two responses to that. The first one is that's absolutely great. And so if you have, when you have a lot of trust in the universe in yourself, right, and confidence, you say you, you intend it and you let it go, and this, it'll take care of itself. The other one is, is that when you get so fixated on it, you write it in a calendar, and you, you count the days, and you start getting attachments to the outcome, and you have expectations, it doesn't happen. 99.9% of the time, it doesn't happen. The only reason things don't happen, this case, is that we get impatient, and we get, we get exasperated, and we start pushing and forcing, pushing and forcing, pushing and forcing. So when we push and force, of course, the universe says, well, okay, and it doesn't come, you push it away. When we intend, right, the universe through the heart-mind, we're in detail of what it is we want, not superficial. So we cover detail with what it is we want. And we do it with confidence through the heart-mind. And because we have total trust in ourselves and the universe. That's why we... We put it out there and we leave it alone. We aren't attached to when, how, why, and where. We, we aren't attached to that. We don't have expectations of the outcome. It's tough for the majority of us to sustain that. Now, we all have the gods that we are within these bodies, parts, Right? Some of the parts are stone cold asleep. Other parts are awake to a certain extent. Consciously aware. Which means that we know that we are of and from the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest eternal love. And when we lose the, the illusion of separation is apparent. Because whenever we look at another person, 
we look at their surface, don't we? Yeah. And we say, well, we're separate from that person. Just like we believe we're separate from the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Felines, the Reticuli, the Anunnaki, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion. Those are gods inhabiting bodies. What are we? The same thing. Is that, does that make us separate? No. One. All of us make up the one. Now imagine all, every, everywhere, all life forms are experiencing, right? That's what they're doing. They're experiencing. Different ways, different directions, different surroundings, but we're all experiencing. And believe it or not, we're all creating those experiences. We create. There's not, there's, you know, something, something out there that comes in and says, okay, we're going to create this for you. We create it. It doesn't mean that we're aware for the, that we're creating everything or that we believe that we're creating everything. Well, we're loved ones who ascend out of physical form, right? In all lifetimes that we've inhabited. The God that ascends out of that body is part of you. The God that you are in that body. All the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, are and beneath her. All of those life forms. It's the God within us and the God within them is the same. All experiencing in different directions. This is about, this is self-discovery for all species. And, and do you believe that, that the rest of the different life forms, like the Palladians, the Syrians, or do you don't think they have ego and mind situations? We're all discovering that we are a God within the body. The physical form that we're inhabiting is for experiences, experience purposes only. Not to take it to heart, literally. Just like the archangels and cherubim, the seraphim, and everything. The gods within their physical forms are the same as the gods within our physical forms. Ascended masters, they have inhabited physical forms. They hold pure consciousness God form. The God that they are is the same as the God that we are. It's all forms, life forms. Some you wouldn't imagine would be life forms, but they are. It's like all the different planetary bodies, life forms, God within. Sun, life form, God within. We literally are all one, but the illusion is, is that we're in physical life forms, experiencing those physical life forms, and we kind of get too immersed in it, and we believe we're separate. If you see somebody acting absolutely crazy, nutsy, cuckoo, oh, I got to get away from this person. It's not the God doing that. It's the body. Those that get, get, get too immersed in the physical can do really heinous things because they, they're they so disconnected from the gods that they are that they believe they're the body. Now we, looking at this planet, 
where we happen to incarnate in physical form, we're liberating it collectively. So don't you, you, you I, I'm sure that we understand that our intent is to liberate this planet as we're doing right now. So that's all the intent. The one affects the many. The many affect the one. So the numbers are insignificant. Hundreds of millions, billions, trillions, googaplexes, which, by the way, one will fill this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. So we focus on the cleansing of this planet, of lower dark matter, survival matter frequency, pure, corrupted, twisted, evil, AI, rogue, goop. We're cleansing it. And we're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, Bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. We're all one. We're all God. We're all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. And it continues to grow, intensify, and expand. There's no escape. We immediately form a massive white fire circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. This white fire circle of light emanates from the gods that we are within these bodies. Pure, deep, eternal love. Highest of the highest high vibrational frequency. Flooding, saturating, permeating this planet. On it, in it, above and below it. Infinity and beyond. There's no escape. It is absolutely everywhere. And it continues to expand, intensify, and grow. And we begin to ascend above the planet. We come into immediate contact with this massive ocean of glitter. We describe it the best we can with the events that we've experienced on this planet so far in this life. Grand finale fireworks display, laser light show display, ballroom globe, faceted mirror globe, shine light on it, and it floods the room with light. We, we combine all these. They're super intensified, maybe a trillion times, and we combine them into one massive crescendo in, in, a, in a burst of light and sparkle and reflection and colors it's about as near as we can come to describing the ocean of glitter. Now, we look at the reflective points, which are everywhere in this ocean of glitter. And they're all tiny little microscopic mirrors, perfectly etched. So we enter them and we discover that everywhere and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, we, all of us, are learning and teaching from each other. There's gods in different physical forms teaching us gods in these physical forms many different things. The, the, the key factor is, is that if we're too immersed in the outside world, the material physical world, we miss most of it. Okay? We, would, we would think more in the ego mindset by saying, well, that, that's insignificant. That's not teaching me anything. That's a lower life form. That's a, that's a lower consciousness which is absolutely absurd. And so we view it that way. So we miss a lot of this. Now, others of us will look at a tree and say, there's a God within that tree experiencing that life of that tree. And the God gives the tree life. Life is God. God is life. Pure consciousness. And it goes way beyond consciousness. 
And they all teach us something different. I'm sure that, that all of us at one time or another when we were kids would look at something and just out of curiosity, what would it be like to be, a, to be that? I want to be a horse. I don't want to be a cow. I want to be a dog. I want to be a cat. Did you ever do that? Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. That's before we get weighted down in the rat race. We can still do that. You see, you look at something, and you say, I wonder what it would be like to be that. Not as an escape, but through the heart-mind, just out of curiosity. So in meditation, contemplation, you look at whatever it is that you would like to know what it's like to be that, and for a brief moment, you'll know. Because it isn't separate from you. Because there's a God within it. And there's a lot of things that gods enter and experience that you wouldn't think or believe has any significance. That's why we say life is the highest supreme value in the universes. Because it is God. The highest supreme value in the universes, in all existence and beyond, in all pure consciousness and beyond. Whether it be a bug in the rug, or a moose, a cow, a bird, all teaching us something. We choose to listen or watch. Now, we're immediately met, we carry, we, we create columns of light, the gods that we are in these bodies, remind us of things. So you have Archangel Raphael, who carries the omnipotently powerful emerald green flaming healing light. This reminds the gods that we are in these bodies that we have the power and are the power of healing these bodies that we're in. Then we're met with Archangel Michael, who's carrying a column of light, fire light, violet blue purple flaming light. And this is to remind us, the gods that we are, of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. Then we have the white firelight. This is a column of light that we created. It reminds us all that from head to toe, inside and out, while in the, the, with these bodies, we are protected 24-7. This white fire armor emanates from the gods that we are in these bodies, which is pure, deep, eternal love, which is the highest of the highest high vibrational frequency. So the lower dark matter, survival matter, demons, uh, attachments, um, they can't come near us because of that frequency. They'll vaporize. They know it. They stay away. 24-7, infinity and beyond, is long as you keep that frequency. Now, only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency, consciously or unconsciously, your hatred, anger, greed, revenge, dishonesty, manipulation, hurriedness, envy, fear, stress. You will lower your vibrational frequency low enough, creating a breach in your white fire armor, allowing all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Then there's possibilities. There's possibilities of being possession, attachments, all kinds of things. Now, if you do decide to do this, we have a fail set. Gods that we are. We created different columns of light. We create the double column of light. First part of that column is the purple transmuting flame. This reminds us that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance. 
sending them to pure consciousness where they are? No more. Second part of this column is the violet ray. We created this part of the column to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray, cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We're then met with the golden white pink light. This is a fiery column of light that the gods that we are within these bodies created to remind us that we are the sun. We are the sunlight, the rain, the rainbows, sunsets, sunrises, oceans, rivers, lakes, streams, trees, forests, soils, animals, clouds in the sky. We're everything. Everything is us. Now, on a regular basis, we were all conditioned while in these bodies for a very long time to believe that we're separate, that the gods in these bodies are separate. So when we see a sunset or a sunrise, ocean view, mountain view, starry lit night sky, we say, isn't that beautiful? That's spectacular. That's just wonderful. And it is because it's describing the gods within these bodies. Now, out of the ego mind into the heart mind, when you see a sunset, sunrise, rainbow, you say, that's the God that I am. And that's the truth. It is the God that you are. And, you know, you get to a point where you say, God, we can really make a planet, can't we? How do you think the perspective would change on this planet with that understanding? Now, we continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us who are carrying physical form step outside that physical form and hover effortlessly above it. The reason we do it is because we can, and it's a lot of fun. It really is. And we come across this massive crystalline light tower. We, the gods in these bodies, created this tower, larger than a solar system and beyond. Center of the column we discover this massive oblong sphere. Center of the sphere, this humongous golden white bowl of light. It is surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light that seem to go to infinity and beyond. This all in turn creates this super bright, massive, misty cloud formation, sparkling and flashing, reflecting, and it's absorbed into our heart mind. And it feels like a warm embrace that never ends. We discover that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest, eternal love. Then comes gratitude, well-being, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, abundance, massive prosperity, and massive abundance. And we discover that all this is a reflection of the gods that we are within these bodies. Now, at the top of this column, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees 
flooding, saturating, and permeating all life, the highest supreme value in the universe is in this part of it. And it is another blower. No escape. Everything is saturated. Everything. And beyond. No hiding place for the lower dark matter, flat matter frequencies, pure crop and twisted evil. No hiding place. It is the golden ocean. It's pure and deep eternal love. And all of us drop to that golden ocean. And we all hold the essence of that golden ocean. Golden ocean is a drop, drop to the golden ocean. The only illusion is separation. See our meditators here. We, the gods within these bodies, created this here over four years ago. It was the early 1900s of our meditations and perpetual motion. Every day, hundreds of millions on and off the world. Meditating on the complete transformation of this planet into a God planet. Paradise. Without fail, seven days a week over four years. This planet we are affecting, not only this planet. But in turn, it is affecting this entire universe. And beyond. That's why this fear can be seen, heard, felt, all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. This life continues to grow, intensify, and expand. How many of us can tap into watching through our eye what actually is transpiring? I'm going to go and blow this planet. Focusing on the breath, moving into the now. And you can just see yourself floating, all floating, you know, looking down at the planet. And we can see the gods that we are. We created this atmosphere. And it is, you can see through it. And it's a brilliant emerald green golden, white, pink field. And you can see the shimmering of the different colors. Now, you also can see all of the dark goop, the blackest of the blackest black. And that rogue AI goop, corrupted, twisted souls, pure evil goop. And what you're witnessing, and we're all watching, as this new is evaporating from the planet, as it goes through the atmosphere, it gets less and less and less. Now, we created this guy as a catcher for any remnants that may make it through the field. And if anything does, it will go into the sky, which is a brilliant golden white shivering canopy. And you see one flash of any residual of the goop that, that, that possibly makes it to that level. And it flashes and vaporizes and it doesn't exist any longer. This is what's taking place on this planet. 24-7 is physically beyond. Because it, 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 it's constant. The mind cannot keep up with consciousness. It is too fast for the mind. The mind is always getting caught in the past, in the future, yesterday, tomorrow. When you are totally in the moment, there is no mind. The mind is always getting caught in the past and future. When you are totally in the moment, there is no mind. 
you're sitting and being silent, being open to everything and resisting nothing. Realize that it is coming from either a fear of loss or a fear of separation from the source. The meditative mind happens once the feeling of whatever you want to change is fully experienced and dissolved. I'll join you in the meditation and I'll return to close this out.
repeat and easy breath in through the nose slowly and an easy slow breath out of the mouth be still enlightenment occurs in the instance when everything in your mind is completely at ease completely stop all worries and concerns cancel all negative thoughts the moment they arise just let you be you and notice your pure untainted consciousness be present to the river of moments and existence and this eternally flowing yet infinite silent still universe Take this with you for the rest of the day and to the evening and night the following morning. We will return here tonight, 9 p.m., Wednesday, June 15, 2022, to continue our Time for Change call. And tomorrow, Thursday, June 16, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our Global Guided Meditation call.